beginning when I started with it, I thought this is really the dog that caught the car. It's just wonderful. Um, you get out of that operation and you, and you know this guy is just going to do well because everything is calculated, everything is precise. The patient we operated on was referred to me by another urologist. He presented to him with difficulty in urinating and he had a raised PSA, which is the blood test for cancer. He therefore did biopsies first to establish whether there's cancer in his prostate. But he had quite extensive cancer. So because of the bigger prostate and the multifocal nature of the prostate cancer, we decided to rather operate than opt for other treatment in him. You have to err on safety side and that's my attitude towards this. When you do cancer surgery, number one is cure, number two is saving the patient's uh, continence and number three in the line of importance is saving his erections. So it's more important to cure a patient than to do the operation to save his erections only. The main issues that we have with open surgery that we can't see that clearly and therefore you have a lot of blood loss with open surgery for prostate removal whereas with a robot you can see every little vein and artery and you can control this beforehand. My statistics show that uh, over 50% of my patients go home the next day. It's not everywhere that they're going to put up a robot and robots will get cheaper and will be used more. And the main areas that they will be used will be cancer surgery, gynecologically. I don't think it has a place for an ordinary hysterectomy or simple surgery. They use it also for heart surgery, uh, for bypass heart surgery because of the stability of the robot arms. Obviously, uh, it, is, it doesn't shake even if the surgeon does. I'm very proud that I've gone this far in doing robotic surgery. It has been a, a long road, it's not easy. It is really the future of surgery, there's uh, no denying that.